Hey, hey, good morning and happy Wednesday veterans and thank you for spending time with us today. I'm Coach Aaron Darty, and before we get started with today's topic, go ahead and sound off in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from and what branch of service and what years you served. I'm U.S. Navy from um, 2006 to 2009, and it was cold this morning in Austin, Texas. Hi, everyone. I'm Coach Naomi. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Please go ahead and comment in the comment section where you're from, and we're really excited to get this topic going with you guys today. Hey, John. Good morning, Rhonda, Freddie. Uh-oh, the Marines were first. I see Scott, 81 to 88. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Jeff was Air Force, 86 to 90 from Iowa. All right, Houston, Texas in the house. Hey, good morning, Paul. All right, got the Navy in there. John, 91 to 2011. Love it. David was Navy, 84 to 94. Mark, 82 to 90 in the Army. Sunny Clearwater, Florida. All right, Mark, you're making me jealous this morning. <laughs> Robin calling in from the STL, St. Louis there, it sounds like. Philip Army, Fort Carson. Save, good morning. Grapevine, Texas. All right, Greg. I see all types of different years of service here. Everybody calling in from all over. Grapevine, Fort Worth. Everybody's all over Texas in here today. Welcome. All right, Jerry, Bob, welcome home. Ken calling in from sunny California. Let's hope it's sunny where you're at at least. <laughs> All right. Army, Navy. I see the Coast Guard, Air Force. All right. A couple more Marines. Welcome, everybody. Frank from Virginia Beach. There's some more of my sailors. He's a lifer. Oh, Ken's in San Francisco. Hopefully it's done flooding there finally. All right, Detroit, Michigan. Let's see Ronnie in the Army, Jay in the Marine Corps. Janice is checking in for her husband, Chip. Welcome you both. All right, Robert, my last duty station, Pensacola, Florida. I miss Pensacola in the warm water there. I lived in California for like a decade, a little over a decade, and the water out there is not so warm. All right, more Navy, Michael Lee, Mary. Cortez and Tom, I see U.S. Marine Corps, 77 to 98. All right. Oh, David, go Army. It, it was not my, the, the Navy's year this year, man. All right, we've got everybody from all over today. All right, so I got five minutes after the hour. Um, I'll introduce myself really quick. I'm Coach Aaron Darty. I'm a U.S. Navy vet. Um, 
I was not an elite member, um, although I did use a for-profit agency years before VACI um, existed to help me get to 100%. So I do understand how important it is to reach out for help and get help with your benefits to get to that ultimate 100% overall, if that's what you deserve. Um, you know, I used to work as a national service officer for the Vietnam Veterans of America organization and, you know, did that for many years before COVID hit and all the VSO locations closed down. And that's really what brought me to VACI. I was wanting to be able to continue to help out and continue to serve veterans all over the world. What about you, Naomi? Hi, everyone. Coach Naomi. I'm actually um, not a vet um, and I don't come from a military background. Uh, before working at VACI, I actually was into clinical social work and also into some uh, law background as well. Um, what actually brought me into work at VACI is that I really wanted to help underrepresented and underserved groups. Um, and I can't, you know, think of a better way, you know, to help vets and to, to work through VACI and help throughout the claims process. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We're really excited to talk about our topic today. But before we begin, we're going to start off with our disclaimer, okay? Um, so VACI, we are not accredited agents, VSOs, attorneys, or any other entity recognized by the Department of Veterans Affairs or the VA, and we are not affiliated with the VA in any way. VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching consulting company for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and who wish to learn more about that process. VA Claims Insider also connects veterans with vetted independent medical professionals in our referral network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions, or IMOs, for a wide range of disability conditions. So let's start off and talk, a lot, talk about um, the VA CI Elite Program. Um, so as part of the Elite Program, um, what we like to focus on is kind of the SEM model or strategy, education, and medical evidence. So as part of the Elite Program, um, you will have that one-on-one -on -one coaching um, where you know you'll talk strategy with your coach. So, what are those conditions that you wish to fall for? You know, are we going for direct service connection? Are we going to go for a secondary service connection? You're going to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation or th during your strategy session, where you'll build a plan, a game plan, like we like to call, as to how to really target those conditions that you want, wish to fall for. We're very, very big on education, right? So, we want to make sure that not only are we providing you with, with resources. Um, and you know uh, how to best submit your claims, but also make sure that we provide um, a array of other resources for you to become educated in your process as well. So what does that look like? Um, we offer live classes via Zoom every day, three times a day, um, where we talk about different topics, um, whether that is you know Mental Health Mondays, um, CMP prep classes, and also uh, Q&A classes. We also offer uh, an array of specialty classes, things about sleep, let's say for example, high value claims, uh, or let's say high level reviews and what to expect in that process. Um, one of the things that we touched upon when we talked about you know, what we do at VACI is really big on medical evidence, right? So what do you have in your treatment and your service records? Um, are you missing certain things in order to get you service connected? And if so, um, you know, we have the tools to refer you over to our uh, partner referral uh, network of Telemedica so they can provide these services for you, right? So these are the folks that we tap in for Nexus letters, for um, IMOs, let's say you want to put in an increase, we go in for refer you there for a DBQ. So we're really here to help you along the way to really uh, have a fully developed claim um, and guide you step by step throughout that journey through submission and after um, also preparing you for that CMP exam as well. Yep. So if you guys would like to learn more, you can schedule a free discovery call and talk to one of our team members by going to vaclaims.help. Um, so if you need some help, reach out to our organization at vaclaimsinsider.com. We'd love to partner with you on your VA claims journey. All right. So let's get into one of these you know, discussions for high value claims that we're talking about today. It is neuropathy. Um, neuropathy is a, a nasty little condition that I personally um, experienced myself from a service-connected condition. And so I was really excited to be able to talk about this topic here today. Um, neuropathy is weakness, numbness, pain from nerve damage, usually in your hands and feet. Um, I personally have it in my arm, um, secondary to my shoulder. So, you know, as mentioned, right, neuropathy is a word associated with damage to your peripheral nerves. 
All right. So a lot of times it can be, so, you know, the common cause can be diabetes, but it can also be a result from, as I said, you know, my personal self injuries, um, infections or exposures to toxins. And so, you know, with neuropathy, you know, I personally experience a lot of pain, some pins and needles sensations, you know, numbness, weakness, tingling, things like that. Um, so as I mentioned, right, neuropathy is not a fun thing to deal with, but a lot of people do. It goes misdiagnosed for a really long time. Um, a lot of vets do that suck it up, carry on, suffer in silence, Naomi. And so, you know, a lot of us don't talk about that with our providers. And that's where we go with being misdiagnosed or, or undiagnosed for a really long time with these types of conditions. Um, have you come across any of your vets that have had these types of issues that have never talked to their doctor about them, Naomi? Yeah, um, oftentimes, you know, they'll say, you know, I have shooting pain and I kind of deal with it. Um, you know, I don't really know what's going on. I'm, my first recommendation is, hey, have you have you gone to your doctor about that? Have you checked that out? It can actually be neuropathy. It could be something way more serious. Um, and oftentimes, um, right, commonly see it, say, like, you have a an injury or fall in service, maybe you hurt your back, and then as a result, you're having shooting pains to the left or right extremities. And you kind of deal with, oh, well, I guess it's a result of that injury, but hey, it's really important, right, to go get that checked out because it actually could be neuropathy, right? And if something, if you are dealing with neuropathy, you want to make sure that you are getting, you know, compensation that you deserve. So very first step, always go to the doctor, check that out, make sure that, you know, you know what's going on. I love that. Get to the doctor, right? Um, our CEO and founder, Brian Reese, has always mentioned going to, you know, get your butt to the doctor. And that's usually what I find myself saying to a lot of my clients is get your butt into the doctor. You know, there's a lot of different nerves throughout our body, right? There's sensory nerves, there's motor nerves, there's auto mnemonic nerves. Um, you know, so sensory nerves, they encompass, you know, how you control what you feel, right? Pain, temperatures, light and touch, things like that. Light touch. Um, motor nerves can be things like motor functions and body movements. Um, then, of course, you know, the autonomic nerves can be things like breathing, blood pressure, heart rate, digestion, bladder function. Um, you know, and, and this is where I think I've seen that a lot of veterans that I talk to will believe that these are potentially symptoms that have come on because of age and things like that. Um, Naomi, like you said, though, a lot of veterans can experience this due to an injury, right? And so neck, back, shoulders, um, these are things where, you know, a lot of times we're just not talking about it and being vocal with our providers. Um, I know a lot of times where I've worked with older vets that have things like diabetes, you know, peripheral neuropathy is a huge secondary high value claim. And so this is where I would definitely tell somebody if they've been experiencing something like this, it's time to reach out, get a coach, get somebody that can help you through the process. Um, you know, if you're on the fence about signing up, you can always reach out and speak to one of our business development representatives for a free discovery call. Um, and so I highly recommend that, you know, there's also Brian's book, You Deserve It. Um, you know, a lot of times veterans experience these things and don't know that it's something that they can relate back to their time in service or to an injury that they're already service connected for. So they don't pursue these additional benefits. And, you know, I've seen veterans that have gotten percentages for upwards of 60% for things like neuropathy. I mean, I've got multiple different 20% ratings personally for this. And so this is where I always tell my vets, these are huge high value claims and they really need to check those out. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, just, just to throw it out there, a couple of like uh, symptoms to become kind of an idea, right? So what are the damage to the sensory nerves kind of look like, right? That entails numbness, tingling, sensitivity, loss of feeling in body parts, uh, you know, damage in motor nerves can be muscle weakness or twitching, maybe, you know, trouble eating or swallowing, um, you know, damage to autonomic nerves can look as maybe loss of bladder, bladder control, um, you know, maybe uh, incontinence, constipation, um, you know, regular heartbeat, difficulty breathing, just to throw a couple of those out, um, you know, it could uh, present itself in different ways, right? And it could be something that's temp temporary or it could be something that, you know, actually prolongs itself. So just the very first step is always, you know, understand those symptoms, go get checked out um, and, you know, get a better understanding of what nerves and, and how severe, right, that neuropathy is. 
You, you mentioned a couple of things there, Naomi, that, you know, of course, at VACI, we preach being uncomfortably vulnerable. And so, you know, bladder control issues, you know, things like that, you know, it may be difficult for you to hold, you know, being able to go to the bathroom or those types of issues just happen. And it could be a direct result of maybe a back issue that you're experiencing. And so, again, these are things where we highly recommend getting in, getting to the doctor and talking to them. Um, I know years ago I went into my doctor because it was you know, right after Halloween and I love to steal my kids Halloween candy. Um, although with my hand that I have neuropathy in my, my couple of fingers here, I have difficulties opening up boxes at times like that. And so I was getting really mad. I reached out to my doctor and was talking to them about that. Um, you know, with my back, I know that the neuropathy that I get from that has only progressed over time, um, you know, gone into my feet. I get some cramping and things like that. And that's where, again, right, a lot of our clients suck it up, carry on and just don't talk to their doctors about these types of conditions, even though they've been experiencing them for years, if not decades on end. So, um, you know, highly recommend reaching out to a primary care provider. You know, if you're having issues like this, that way you can get it documented. Um, if you're already service connected for something like a you know neck, shoulder, back issue, something like that, or diabetes, and you have issues like this, definitely reach out, talk to a coach, get somebody that can help guide you through this process to help you understand and obtain the service connection that you deserve for these conditions. Okay, I see starting comments here. So Mark Nichols says, had an in-service injury that resulted in medical retirement Part of my rating was for nerve damage in both legs from a spinal surgery. Both were rated at the 40% each, but the left side included foot drop. What do you think the left side, since it includes foot drop, should be higher than the right side? Yeah, Mark, um, you know, things like foot drop paralysis do, you know, would include higher ratings for conditions like that. Um, you know, again, neuropathy encompasses several different nerve groups. And, you know, this is where I tell you, if, you know, if you're having foot drop, definitely follow up with a provider, let them get that documented. This is where, you know, of course, Naomi was talking about that medical evidence, right? You need your medical evidence to be able to prove your symptoms in the higher rating. Um, I, I know when I first got out of the service, I had to get a nerve conduction study completed to be able to understand exactly how damaged my nerves were. Um, if anybody's ever had one of those, not a fun test. I got, you know, poked by a lot of different needles in different places and shocked a, a whole lot to be able to understand exactly how my nerves were responding to the electroshocks and things like that. And so, you know, again, this is where I recommend being able to have that proper testing to understand exactly where it is. I know I've had a lot of vets that have been, in my opinion, underrated for conditions like that based on what they explained to me in terms of their symptoms. And, you know, this is where I say where it's not fun, go get that nerve conduction study done. That way you have that current medical evidence to support your symptoms in the higher rating. So, you know, Mark, this is where I tell you definitely link with the coach, right? Um, it's time to sign up so that you can get somebody to help guide you through the proper CFR rating for your condition. Yeah, thank you. you know, one thing I'd like to talk about with this, too, is that, right, it's, it's not just physical conditions that have had traumas and things, you know, it's diabetes, cancers, chronic organ, organ diseases, there's other infectious diseases that can cause things like neuropathy. Um, you know, a lot of my service connected ratings are secondary conditions. And I think some of us veterans don't think about that, right? We think that this didn't happen to us in service and it's not something that we can actually go after anymore. And this is where, again, Naomi, right, being able to have access to VA Claims Insider and the resources that we offer for these types of high value claims would really help a lot of clients understand what they need to do to be able to go after these conditions, especially you, Mark. Uh, yeah, I think that it's also important to understand the way the VA rates nerve damage um, and how they kind of break that rating down. Um, um, it's really important to know that the VA breaks down neuropathy in three separate categories. Um, the first being paralysis. Um, and typically this is um, the case where it's most severe and where you would potentially get the higher rating, right? Um, and th that's where you have to have, you know, partial or complete paralysis, uh, you know, in order to fall within that. The second category will be neuritis. 
I'm saying that correctly. Um, and that typically encompasses mild to severe cases. Um, it's my understanding that you can go up to 70% under this um, category. Um, and it encompasses the information of your nerves. Um, you know, symptoms definitely vary. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, painful. Um, but you have to have at least, you know, one of the, the following three symptoms. So whether it's loss of reflexes, uh, muscle atrophy, or tingling or numbness. Um, and then the third and final uh, category that the VA looks at is that neuralgia um, and that it can't be higher than what they consider moderate, right? Um, and that is irritated or damaged nerves, um, sharp stabbing or burning pain, um, you know, that follows kind of a damaged nerve. Um, and then, you know, it's really important to keep in mind that neurologia can definitely also be a consequence or I'd say a, a result, I should say, of neuritis. So just kind of understanding where you fall within those three categories is also important to know where you would fall within that rating as well. Yeah, Naomi, you know, VA as they do with, you know, other conditions, you know, they base it, you know, based on severity of symptoms and how long they last. Um, you know, when it came down to me opening up to my doctor about my symptoms for this, it was difficult. Um, it's hard for a lot of veterans to open up and be honest with their doctor about where they're struggling with pain, weakness, or inability to perform certain activities due to, you know, the extremities that they're dealing with, with these types of issues. And so, you know, again, being honest about your symptoms and, you know, this is where I tell a lot of my clients, you know, understanding why they rated you at your current per, uh, percentage and how to get to the next percentage is a huge key to that education to be able to obtain the medical evidence that you need, right? So being able to strategize to be able to do that, speak to those symptoms, make sure that you're having that documentation through the VA to be able to qualify for that higher rating is going to be key. I've seen veterans that have had neuropathy and radiculopathy issues that when they've submitted their claims, those weren't addressed in the rating. They just addressed like the increase in their back or their neck or their shoulder. Although what it came down to was having to then submit a separate claim, right? Or then they submitted a claim for it and it was denied because they didn't have a current diagnosis. And so again, right, having that education to know that you need a current diagnosis along with an in-service event or injury with a nexus to be able to link those together to be able to qualify for service connection, that's where, again, having a coach to be able to help you understand these things really does help out and get you the benefits that you deserve much faster. Yeah, for sure. You know, Naomi, one thing that I learned with neuropathy that I don't think some veterans don't understand is that you can't always stop, you know, right? You can potentially stop it, but or slow it down, but you can't reverse neuropathy, right? This is a lifelong medical condition that will be, you know, if you have it, you'll be experiencing and you have to be able to get the proper care that you deserve for it. I know there's a lot of different treatments out there for things like neuropathy um, that I personally have gone through to try to help out with it. So, you know, to minimize the, the weakness, pain and things like that. So, you know, again, being able to grab things and, you know, just perform normal activities of daily living, it's where it helps out. And if you're experiencing these types of things, if you're potentially underrated, again, get a coach to help you increase those benefits and maximize it based on your current situation. Yeah, you touched on a good point, right? Making sure you touch base with your coach, make sure that you're actively getting that treatment. You know, medical evidence is, it's really, really big in, in order to get you that increase. So staying on top of your care, knowing that it's gonna be a condition that over time, you know, may or may worsen, um, you know, and not kind of, may warrant a higher rating uh, per se, based on those. You know, and, you know, I, I saw Dean had mentioned something here about how his, um, neuropathy is generally in his lower body, but both arms have been feeling it within the past year. This is a progression of our symptoms, right? A lot of times the, you know, one thing maybe, you know, I, cause I have vets that I've seen that have only gotten service connected for maybe like one leg as opposed to both. And I've seen that where, you know, a CNP examiner will just flat out ask you which side hurts more and we'll favor one side over the other and say, yeah, well, I have it in this side, but it's, it's more in this side. And so, you know, this is again where, you know, Dean, it sounds like yours has potentially progressed and you need to go in and get treated for it. 
Michael Lee asked where he can find information on the ratings for nerve damage. It's the CFR 38, Michael. It's the, the Bible for all of us here. Um, it's what we look at to be able to help our veterans understand, you know, their symptoms and the rating criteria for each condition. Also recommend checking out our website. We have a ton of, ton of free resources. And I believe we have a few of our blog posts that really break down neuropathy and those three categories and kind of the rating in more detail that we've mentioned as well. So check out vaclaimsinsider.com for sure. Yeah, there's definitely a blog post for how the nervous system is important to your VA claim. There's one for the complete guide to getting, you know, the rating that you deserve for this. So, you know, VACI has some amazing blog posts that um, Brian had wrote about these conditions to help us understand what it is that we're potentially dealing with. Um, because again, a lot of times where we're having symptoms, we may not know what it is. We may have never talked to anybody. We may think it's just normal. Um, I, I know for me, I thought it was normal at the time because I was having shoulder problems and just figured that it was just my shoulder giving me extra issues. But I'm glad I went and talked to my doctor when I did. And hopefully if anybody else is out there dealing with this, they get out there and talk to theirs. Yeah, I also want to address another question here. Uh, Michael Dancy said, I just had an MRI because I was told I have nerve damage. How do I prove it to be service connected? Yeah, Michael, this is where the perfect opportunity, you want to hook up with a coach, right? You want to make sure that um, you guys talk about what's in that medical record, um, maybe getting you over to Telemedica for that nexus if it's necessary, right, to build that connection to service um, and really build a, a game plan and a strategy as to how, you know, get that service connected. Um, but it looks like you're, you know, you got that first step done, right? You went to the doctors, you were getting the MRI done. So definitely don't give up, keep going and, and see that all the way through. Hook up yourself with a coach um, and get that process started. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Naomi. And I see that somebody else had asked, you know, do movement disorders um, fall under neuropathy? There's a lot of other medical conditions that veterans could potentially be experiencing outside of neuropathy. So there's radiculopathy, um, restless leg syndrome, things like that. And so this is where I'd say, you know, um, because I'm not a medical provider, I would tell you to get with a coach. That way they can help you understand exactly what that diagnosis is. If it is something that can potentially be linked that way, if it is something where you need a nexus like Naomi was talking about, your coach can help link you with you know, a company like Telemedica who can help you um, obtain that type of medical evidence to support your claim. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and just when we're talking about medical evidence and getting treated by your doctor, I want to answer uh, Luis this question. Is it better to go to the VA PCP or through my own PCP for getting diagnosed and treatment? It does not matter. What matters is that you're getting treated by a licensed medical professional. Um, both providers, whether private or VA doctor, hold the same weight in terms of your claims. All you really want to show, right, is that diagnosis. You want to make sure you're showing that it's actively current. Um, and any of those documentation you have, want to make sure you upload it with your claim when it's time to submit. But it does not affect whether it's a VA or if it's a private doctor. It's a good question. I get that a lot with my vets. Um, both hold the same weight, the same weights, I should say. Yeah. When I first got out of the service, um, I still had like uh, TRICARE, TriWest for like six months. And then I was married to an active duty sailor at the time. So I still had TRICARE for that. So. I was getting all my treatment through civilian doctors. And that's where I tell a lot of my clients, it doesn't matter where you go, right? As long as you're getting the care. So great question, um, which leads me to, I want to answer this question for Cortez and, and Tam. Um, what are secondaries? So secondaries are conditions that you can service connect, it, not as a direct service connection, but as a result of an already service connected condition. So um, my radiculopathy is secondary. Um, I have neuropathy that's secondary. So um, neuropathy that's secondary to my shoulder. I have radiculopathy that's secondary to my back. So I hurt my shoulder in service. I was able to directly service connect that. And I hurt my back in service. And so I was able to directly service connect the neuropathy and radiculopathy is a secondary condition. Um, Cortez, uh, this is where I tell you that if you have you know potential secondaries, link with a coach. Right. Or sign up for one of the, the free um, calls with a business development representative to help you understand if VACI is a good fit for you to help you obtain additional benefits. Yeah, thank you for that.
Um, I see here, William Ely said, I hurt my back in the military when I first went in training. So how do I report that to the VA? Because I never went to the doctor for it when I was in service. So help me with that. Um, so this is where I would say definitely um, get with a coach, um, especially if you know you had an in-service injury and it wasn't documented. You want to make sure that you are able to speak about different options to get you service connected for that. Uh, maybe you know it's uh, filing your neuropathy secondary to an already service con connected condition, um, but really um, want to make sure you speak about your certain situation right in more detail to, with your uh, coach so they can give you a better strategy, right? They can see what's all in your service record and your treatment records and to see what you are already service connected for um, to be able to give you that strategy um, in order to get that service connected. William, and this is where I'd say, too, right? A lot of times, you know, being prior service myself, um, I know a lot of vets that just didn't go to medical. Um, there's a lot of things that I didn't go to medical for personally when I was in. Um, it was embarrassing. I didn't want to talk about it. You know, things now, right? Things that most of us might experience as a result of neuropathy. You know, there's sexual dysfunction, there's diarrhea, constipation, incontinence, you know, muscle weakness, you know, just pain in general that most veterans don't like admitting that we have. And, you know, where you may not have sought treatment and service, this is where, you know, having a coach to help you then gather some additional evidence, right? Having a good strategy to help you obtain medical evidence to help support that, um, you know, which is where reaching out to old buddies and things like that will come into play. And so again, having a coach to help you understand that would be the key. Yeah, and then in terms of having a coach to really build that strategy, right? That nexus we, we've been uh, mentioning. Um, it's also important to just meet with a coach to talk about, you know, they are presumptive conditions that have come out now with the PACT Act and certain things that could apply, right? In terms of that connection of service and maybe certain conditions that are linked to neuropathy. So it's really um, important that you just, you know, have that discussion with your uh, coach, talk about, you know, if you were deployed anywhere, let's say Vietnam or Gulf War, if you were exposed to, you know, burnt pin or Agent Orange, make sure that you have the discussion because that definitely opens the door to other potential strategies down the line um, to file for other conditions, including neuropathy, right? So definitely wanna, you know, link with the coach for that as well. Naomi, and that um, segues me into Bob's question here. Bob said he served in Vietnam and he's got some balance issues with known exposure to Asian Orange. Um, is this a, pres a presumed condition? He said he has pain and, and things from his knees down to his feet. So, Bob, this is where it would really depend on what your current diagnoses are. Um, it can potentially be a presumptive condition. And, you know, it sounds like, you know, you served in Vietnam. So if you're boots on the ground, then, you know, there's a lot of different medical conditions that are presumptively linked to your service um, overseas. And so this is where having a coach to help you know look through those medical records with you to help you understand what it is that you're dealing with. Maybe you've been dealing with something that you haven't gotten diagnosed yet. Being able to get into the doctor, um, you know, especially with Agent Orange, right? There's a lot of medical conditions that don't just arise right away. Um, it can take many, many years for them to manifest. And you know, one day you can be perfectly fine, and the next you'll wake up and there's something that's coming up that you haven't experienced before that you need to get into the doctor and be treated for. So um, definitely potentially a presumptive condition. I, I would tell you that again, it's it's something to link with the provider about. Most of, you know, a lot of vets that I've worked with that served in Vietnam had things like diabetes and peripheral neuropathy is a secondary condition to their diabetes. Um, again, this is where you'd wanna be able to see what's in your current medical records because we do need current diagnoses to be able to file claims with the VA. Uh, I want to answer this question. Uh, Glessy, if I'm saying this correct, says, do you have a specific diagnosis of neuropathy or if you have chronic neck and back pain, will it be understood that you have neuropathy? Um, it is to my understanding that you do have to have the official diagnosis of neuropathy um, because let's say the VA has different ratings for, let's say, low back pain compared to uh, neuropathy. Um, however, right, um, if you have a service connected, let's say, already connection for your lower back and you have that shooting pain right to your lower extremities, then you can have that strategy um, with your coach where you plan, let's say, let's file your neuropathy secondary to um, your back, right? But again, 
this is something that you need to tease out in more detail with your coach um, to get the bigger picture. We're just speaking broadly. Um, definitely want to make sure that you know you speak about all your service connected conditions. It may be that you're already connected for something, let's say diabetes or um, one of these other conditions that has a better you know connection to neuropathy. So definitely uh, get with the coach and tease those out. Yeah, and you know Keith asked, can neuropathy cause vision loss? Um, Keith, we're not doctors, and this is where I tell you, get into your doctor and talk to them about it, right? Um, they're nerves, and the nerves connect our brain, right? And so we never know what senses that they can truly touch in that sense. Um, just like Terrence is asking here, right? You know, His VA provider um, diagnosed him with an autonomic um, peripheral neuropathy. You know, potentially PTSD or arthritis could be the cause. You want to see what your doctor wrote about the, you know, the onset of that condition, what caused it. Um, this is where telemedica comes into play, right? Because we're not doctors, we can help link you with some that, that do understand these medical conditions way better than we do. Um, that way, if you needed a medical nexus to help you get this service connected, you could obtain that. And so that's where, again, right, being able to have a coach help you and guide you through this process makes it a lot easier, Terrence. Um, so if you're not already signed up or if you're on the fence about signing up, jump on a call with a BDR. Um, if you're ready to sign up, you know, go ahead, get on, you know, VACI's website, you know, Naomi and I both have referral links that you can utilize to be able to sign up with one of us. That way, one of us can help guide you through this process. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, all these questions, um, like, like, uh, you know, you said, just go ahead and, and start that discovery call. Any questions you may have, you, you'll learn a lot about not just, you know, neuropathy, but any other conditions that you may be thinking about. Um, it's a cool, you know, way to have those 30 minutes and just kind of have a preview of what the LEAP program can do for you. So definitely give it a try. Yeah, you know, and Naomi, it's not just about obtaining service connection for the first time, right? It's obtaining the service connection rating that you truly deserve for your medical condition. And that's what we do to help you. Um, I know Randy posted a comment that said he was awarded service connection for disability for right and left feet from surgery when he was in service, but it was given a 0% rating. And he's wondering, why is that? Right. Randy, I, I don't know if you've heard me say it yet or not, but suck it up, carry on, suffer in silence. Um, I, I had several conditions that were rated at 0% when I first got out. I didn't know how to speak to the symptoms. Um, you know, there's, it's not just physical conditions, you know, mental health, there's other conditions, you know, gastrointestinal conditions, migraines, headaches, all types of stuff that we deal with that we just always don't know how to speak to that in terms of what the VA is looking for, for ratings purposes. Um, so Randy, I'd highly recommend, you know, get signed up, get a coach to help you understand why you're sitting at 0% and what you would need to do to increase those benefits. Yeah, um, and definitely want to stress this. Um, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, want to make sure that you, you know, endurance is a big word I like to use. You know, only because you're at the zero percent doesn't mean that you've lost, right? You won that service connection. Keep going. Keep putting those increases. Build that medical evidence, and you know, don't give up until you get that rating that you deserve. And the really cool thing about being part of the elite program, not only are you going to get resources, not only are you going to get hooked up with the doctors for that medical evidence, but you're going to have, you know, us in your corner throughout the process, um, you know, cheering you through the way and making sure that you have that support. Um, and then if you're lost or have any concerns, right, we're like that guiding hand that makes sure that everything's moving along. So definitely, definitely um, don't give up, even if you're at the zero percent or even if you were denied. Right. We're, we're here to review those decision letters to build all the strategy. Maybe you went for direct service connection. OK, well, this time let's go for secondary or let's focus on this other one so that we can get you service for the for the other condition. So it's really, you know, moving pieces, right? <laughs> Trying to get everything together. Um, but this is what we do, right? So we're going to do everything in our power to really get you that, you know, closer to 100%, get those service connections for those conditions. Um, so definitely, definitely, if your very first step is doing that discovery call, go ahead and do it, you know, just start this process. You're not going to regret it. I love it, Naomi. What's what do they say? It's it's chess, not checkers. Yeah, that was, um, I, was, I was thinking about that. Like, it's, right? It's, it's, I, I love it. You know, and, and there's something that I always love to say to our veterans, and you know, the fight's never over. Yeah. Unless we give up, right? We're never out of the fight. Um, all of us know how to lace our boots up tight and dig in deep and keep fighting. Um, I always joke and say that 
you know, when the VA closes one door, they've always trained us to kick that door in. And that's what we do. Um, that's what you have when you come to VACI. You get an expert that's willing to kick in doors with you and dig in deep and help you understand why you're underrated or how to get additional benefits based on either a direct service connection and a secondary condition. And so, you know, this is where, again, having a coach is really key to this, this these um, steps, especially, you know, like I said, for me, I sat at 70 and 80 percent for years thinking that that's what I truly deserved. You know, even though I had multiple conditions sitting at zero percent, had somebody not just flat out told me, hey, here's a bunch of different things that you have that you can go after. I would have never known. And so um, I'm glad that I did it back then. And I wish I would have been able to do it sooner. Yeah. And another big thing is that you, you touched upon it, right? You thought kind of that's what you deserve. Kind of felt like you were, you know, at your point. Um, the really big thing about becoming an elite member is that you're going to have, a, you know, in a community. Not only will you have that one on one coaching with your coach, but you'll also have access to the elite community. Um, a, a perfect example would be coffee with the coaches. If you go into our, our meetings in the morning, you'll hear vets that are in a similar situation that, you know, are frustrated or vets that have overcome it. So you're going to definitely have that camaraderie, right? Other vets definitely, you know, uh, supporting you, giving you their, you know, their experiences and, you know, telling you it does get better. Don't give up. So know that it's not just that one on one coaching but you're kind of you're literally joining a family of folks that have gone through the process or either in the same situation um and they're gonna you know go along with it with you so it's definitely a plus plus in my opinion that's <laughs> awesome you know one thing i want to touch on too when it comes to things like you know neuropathy in general right is that you know they can do tests like blood tests there's spinal fluid tests there's muscle strength tests um, that test your ability to detect the vibrations, CT scans, MRI scans, nerve and skin biopsies. Um, so I saw, one, you know, one of the veterans, Kevin, had asked, you know, about avoiding paramedic. You know, what should you use to claim neuropathy versus radiculopathy? It's your medical evidence, Kevin. And this is where, you know, having a coach to help you understand you know exactly what your current diagnosis is and how to be able to submit that to the VA so that you're doing it properly with the proper evidence. That way you can obtain the, the proper rating that you deserve. Because I see a lot of veterans that'll come out of the gate and get zero even or 10% service connection for things like neuropathy and radiculopathy. And you know, being able to ensure that we're speaking to those symptoms at the higher rating and having that medical evidence is the key there. Love in the comments. I need a coach. Yes. Go ahead and give start that discovery call. Let's start the process. Hop on our website, read up on our, what makes us different. Why the elite program? Definitely start your journey now. Um, you know, get that rating you deserve. Um, you know, you'll hear us say, you know, you serve, you deserve, get that rating. <laughs> so definitely start the process. You know, I saw a post here from Lonnie. Um, Lonnie, it, it looks like you have a claim that's currently pending. Um, look, we don't just help vets that have never submitted or, or vets that have only been denied. You know, the reality of it is, is that where you might have a current pending claim, there may be something that we can look at with you that's outside of what you're currently dealing with, that you've currently got in the system that you can still go after. Um, you know, based on that comment there, it sounds like you got a lot of stuff going on that maybe a rating for neuropathy or radiculopathy, some nerve damage is not going to properly give you the overall rating that you truly deserve based on your condition. And so having a coach to be able to sit down with you, like Naomi's saying, right, look through this to be able to fight with you and make sure that you're getting properly rated and compensated is going to be a good idea for you to make sure that, you know, even with your claim that's pending, six months is a long time for pending claims. Um, this is where having a coach to help you understand, you know, advise you on what to do next would be a good idea. Naomi, one thing I want to remind everybody too, and I know I mentioned it earlier, right? We need three things to establish service connection. We need an in-service event or injury, right? We need that current diagnosis for the condition that we're filing for, and we need a nexus, that link between those two to be able to establish the service connection through the VA. You know, one thing we preach here at VACI is that missing aspect of that. And that's the severity of symptoms, right? Severity and duration of symptoms. And that's where, you know, for me, I've seen a lot of lack of medical evidence with a lot of my clients is where 
maybe there's mention of some nerve issues in their medical records, they're not always following up on it. Um, you know, this is where, again, right, highly recommend being able to follow up with your doctor. If it's not in person, if you, you know, go to the VA, secure messaging, most civilian providers now have secure messaging portals where you can send those messages over to your doctors um, and get those things documented. You know, at least get a response back from them about what you can potentially do next if you are experiencing something like this. So, you know, definitely if you're trying to establish service connection um, or you've been denied, this is where having a coach to help you understand what medical evidence is needed to be able to, you know, either open it for the first time or reopen a claim that's been previously denied, really help out in the overall scheme of things. Yeah, and you touched base on a, on a one point I really want to stress is that, um, you know, the, the one that should be really invested in your claim is sealed, right? You want to make sure that you're actively getting uh, treatment. If you, you know, are having gotten treated for your medical condition that you're, you know, if your coach is giving you tasks that you're following up, you know, we're definitely here to guide you and support you throughout this process. But at the end of the day, right, this is your claim, right? And the work starts day one. So if you are going to join the elite program, know that we're here to give it our 100 and we expect the same from you as a veteran as well. Um, that's the only way that we really can, you know, get that win um, by being proactive and, you know, being on top of those tasks to get these claims in um, and, you know, provide all the medical evidence that and the nexus and, and the diagnosis, things that are needed, right, to have a fully develop claims. So know that the work starts day one once you sign up for the elite program. Yeah, I love it. Um, I saw something here in the comments and I, I always love addressing these and these types of opportunities. Um, I missed it here. I scrolled away, but I think it was Lonnie asked, what is the cost? Um, what's it cost to get a coach? Um, here's the thing. At VACI, we, you don't owe us anything if you don't win your claim. But for the coaching services, for the resources, we do charge you six months your monetary increase. Um, so, you know, a simple way of saying that is if you go from $500 to $1,000 a month, there's a change in $500. We times that by six to get your invoice. Um, so, you know, just being honest and upfront, we do charge for our services, right? We're experts. This is what we do day in and day out to help our veterans obtain the benefits that they deserve. Um, but again, if you don't win, you don't owe us anything. So there's no upfront fees. Um, so, you know, if you need help, you need a coach, you can sign up with me and Naomi today for free, completely free. So go ahead and get that taken care of. Um, you're missing out if you're not. Yeah. Also want to touch base that um, let's say if in your claim you need, you know, to be referred to Telemedica, for example, for that medical evidence and nexus. Um, you know, they do, they are their own company. They do have their own fees, but because of that partnership, you're going to get the VACI discount. Um, so it is definitely not just that one-on-one -on -one coaching that you're going to get as part of the elite program. You're going to get, um, that discounted service, right. With telemedica for their services, whether that's an IMO, a DBQ or a Nexus letter. So it's a really good value, a really good, um, investment, you know, to get those things service connected for sure. Yep. Um, you know, Terry asked a question here and I'm, this is where, because I don't have the condition, I can't pronounce the name, but Terry, um, we do claims with just about everything here. Um, the reality of it is, is there are so many different medical conditions that you can file claims for, for compensation through the VA, that if you have something that's compensable, we're here to help. Um, we're here, here to help you understand what it is that you're dealing with, how the VA rates that and what kind of medical evidence that you need to be able to support that claim. Um, you know, just like I see David's asking, you know, it's bottom of the feet, you know, feet numbness count. This is where I tell you, it all depends on what it is that you're experiencing and what's in your current medical uh, records to see what it is that we can do to properly assist you with your claims process. So, you know, definitely reach out. One thing I touch on too, is in the event that we have any Spanish speaking um, veterans here in the class and the live today, we do have a Spanish speaking live um, that we offer um, as well. And so you guys can sign up for that. We have Spanish speaking coaches available to be able to assist you. Um, you know, you don't have to listen to any, any of me try to, to suffer through understanding anything. You can actually get a coach that speaks Spanish to walk you through the process. Actually, I'm one of them. Um, if anyone's interested, I am a Spanish speaking coach. Um, and any questions, you know, definitely uh, click my referral link and we could definitely get this process going. I love it. That was the perfect time for your plug there, Naomi. Sure was. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right. You guys asked a lot of great questions today. Yeah. If you have any more, please try to, to get those in before we finish up today. Um, amazing questions. Uh, you know, a lot of good insight, I think, into the potential claims for neuropathy and how to go about potentially getting some increased disability benefits for those. Definitely reach out. You know, again, we offer free discovery calls where you can speak to one of our team members and just even see if this is a good fit for you. Um, Brian's got a book out called You Deserve It, um, an amazing resource. Um, I've been helping veterans with VA claims for almost 10 years. Um, Brian's book is a one stop shop for everything VA claims. Um, I, that thing has come in handy for me time and time again. I moved recently um, and from California to Texas, and I was looking through that book to see uh, to ensure that I was taking advantage of all the additional benefits that Texas has to offer to their veterans. So um, you can get Brian's Brian's book. Um, he's got an ebook out there, um, but again free discovery calls, you know, you can sign up directly to be able to talk to a coach. Um, they've got links for Naomi and myself. Otherwise, you can go to the website. All the coaches are listed there. You can see a little bit of information about them, how they came about to come into VACI and see if, you know, we're a good fit for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I wanted to answer, um, someone asked about um, how do they, uh, how do we process our payments, right? So we give our vets um, two payment options. So either it could be 12 month interest free payments, or if you do a lump sum payment, we'll shave off 10%. Um, so we do give that options for vets, right? To fit whatever um, works best for you. Um, I believe that was a question from Dennis. Awesome. There's a question from John and Chris. How hard is it to go from 90 to 100? um it's possible not impossible right um get with your coach we can talk about what's the easiest way um you know what is necessary um you might be surprised how easy it may be right but you just need that fresh set of eyes and your coach can provide so just get with a coach um see what you're already service connected for and you know what we can do maybe it's an increase maybe it's filing a secondary um maybe you qualify for presumptives we don't know right want to make sure you touch base with a coach i love it Travis, so I saw you a question. The details of Brian's book, it's called You Deserve It. Um, it's available on Amazon. Um, you can go on there and get it. Um, you know, if you sign up as an elite member, your coach can be able to give you a link for a, a free electronic ebook to that. That way you can go through there as well. Yeah, well, this has been an interesting topic, um, like I said, especially considering that I deal with it, um, just seeing a lot of the questions that have come in. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that are experiencing some types of symptoms one way or the other. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of potential veterans that are, you know, missing out by not having a coach or, you know, an expert to be able to help walk them through this claims process. So, you know, again, as Naomi said, right, many times again, strategy, education, medical evidence, you know, that's our SEM method here. That's what we preach. That's how we get our clients the VA benefits that they deserve faster. Um, you know, the classes that we offer, the live Zooms, you know, the steam peep preps, um, the coffee with the coaches. I love coffee with the coaches. It's like therapy for me, um, being able to go in there and just hear everybody else share what else they're, they're going on, where they're at in the claims process and get encouragement. Um, that's one of the things that we offer Monday through Friday here at VA Claims Insider. So, um, you know, like I said, for myself, it's been very therapeutic. I know a lot of veterans that I have seen that signed up you know, years ago that still go to coffee with the coaches, even after they, their claims have gone through. So um, VACI is a, an amazing community to be able to come in and, you know, learn from other veterans about the VA claims process to empower yourself to obtain everything that it is that you truly deserve from the VA through this benefits process. Yeah, definitely. I myself also love going to coffee with the coaches. It's a good reminder as to kind of the work we do and why, right? Hearing how, you know, that win, whether it's, you know, 20% or, or 30 or even getting to the 100, how that drastically, you know, affects veterans' lives and just hearing that story, you know, definitely is a motivating factor for what we do and keeps me going and wants to, makes me want to help more veterans um, and just spread the word about our program for sure. Um, you know, you're not going to regret it. Um, we're here, you know, to, to do everything we can and get you close to 1%. We're company by vets, for vets. 
Um, and you know, we're, we're in your corner. We want to make sure that you get that rating that you deserve. Joseph asked an amazing question here. He said, if I have Texas veterans helping me, can you still help me with the claims that I have 0%? Joseph, I help veterans all day, every day that have already got a service organization assigned to them. I'm not trying to take the place of your service organization. Again, we are not accredited agents, VSOs or attorneys, right? Um, and not recognized by the Department of Veterans Affairs in any way. So what we can do is we can, you know, help guide you where your VSO potentially hasn't throughout this process. Um, as I mentioned, man, I, I used to be a national service officer for an accredited organization. Working for, for somewhere like that, there were certain things that I was just not able to do um, in terms of helping veterans obtain the medical evidence that I can help with here as a coach, right? So um, that's where, again, just because you have the Texas veterans helping you out doesn't mean that we can't. So I would definitely recommend signing up. Um, to be able to get you outside of those 0% ratings. All right, Patrick, six months of the increase amount. So it's six times your monetary increase, all right? Um, and as Naomi mentioned, you can make a lump sum payment with a 10% discount, or you can make 12 monthly payments with zero interest. All right, those 12 monthly payments usually end up being about half of the increase that you weren't getting prior to working with us, right? So um, VACI helps helps you obtain money that you weren't getting to be able to pay your invoice. Yeah. Uh, I want to answer uh, Max's question. If you have a coach you cannot get on the calendar for six weeks, how do you request a different coach? Um, you want to go ahead and send an email to support at VA Claims Insider. We want to make sure that if you're ready to go um, and you want to start the process and maybe your calendar is not aligning, your availability is not aligning with your coach's calendar, that we get you someone that is. So definitely send an email to support at VA Claims Insider. We will definitely get you a coach that you know is available with your availability and get you going. Love it. Yeah, Max, reach out so we can get you squared away. You know, and, and with that being said, as I don't see any additional questions coming in, you know, if you need help, reach out to our organization at VAClaimsInsider.com. We'd love to partner with you on your VA claim journey and see what we can do to help you increase your and maximize your VA benefits. Thanks, everybody, for your time today. Hope everybody has a great rest of the day. Happy Wednesday. Thank you, everyone.